characteristics of a field. Um, short text has a default of 255 characters, so if you limit it to a smaller number, it will warn you that you are, have the potential to lose information. One of the things about Access is that it will uh, give you warnings or give you error messages and it's not in normal English and so you have to try and figure out what it's trying to tell you or why it's blocking you from doing something. Um, and one of that primary key issue is one of those things that if you are not letting every value in that field be unique, then it will um, give you a hassle. You won't even be able to save anything that you change here. And so you'll get this error of, sorry, you can't do that because this property needs to be met first of having a unique value in the student ID field um, before it will let you go on. So it's not letting you make that error of wiping everything out, okay? Um, so this is your student field. When we look at your um, faculty ID table, student table, not student field, faculty ID table, um, this was 29 different professors that you have in your list, and these are all the professors that advise, kind of, kind of um, appropriate for this time of year. Um, and basically all you did here was bring it in as a new table. So all of these fields were already set up for you. Um, you just said, create a table out of this data. You did have to make this first row be um, column headings, and so if you have this as column one, col or it would actually be field one, field two, field three, field four. It means you didn't check that box. And your first row most likely is going to have a record, a row of data that says faculty ID, rank, campus, et cetera, instead of the kind of data that you need to put in there, okay? So look for that error um, on your assignment before if you haven't turned it in yet. Your form is just the default form based on, okay. This error, in case you um, get it, means that I've got the student field open in design view. That's what it's telling me. And I have to say, okay, it won't let me go anywhere. And I do have it in design view because it's thinking I might change the structure of my table. Okay, so it's not going to let me open up anything else that uses this data until I get out of this edit mode. See how I'm blinking here? Okay, so I'm just going to close this and say, no, I don't want to change anything. And now when I come to open up the form, it's happy to, to show that form to me, okay? These are all the default um, fields from your, your table. And so it's just showing you one record at a time. Remember that you can navigate between records by using your, um, this reminds me of a, a tape recorder or a recorder of some sort where you advance one record at a time. Or you can go to the very last record or the very first record. Um, jump around to the uh, beginning or end of the list. And for a new record, you need to use this one. Oops. Uh, this one here. If you don't create a new record and you start typing, you're essentially overwriting an existing record. So you need to be really careful when you're adding new, new records that you don't delete what's already there. Make sure you have a blank record um, to start something new. Okay? Um, and then your report was the... Um, same fields, but not as many. Some of you, I can tell you, at least one person um, gave me a report with all of the fields in there, okay? So you were to go in and remove some of the fields so you only have the campus, last name, first name, and email for, for your faculty advisors, all right? And then the last one is your query, and your query is a question, and here we had the same number of records. We have 25 students. Um, same number of students as we would have had in the original table, but we removed some of the fields. We don't have the address, the, you know, the, the mailing address. We just have the email and the phone and the student ID for that. So we removed um, a field or two from our list. That's the simplest form of a query, is just to not have as many um, fields as um, your original table. And I want to make sure that you guys are really clear that the data itself lives in those tables, okay? I can see data in a form, I can see data in a report, but I can't, you know, if I, if I, I can modify things in um, a form and it will modify it in the table. It's actually going back to the table and working with where that data is stored, okay? Um, 
Any questions about that? Did anybody have any trouble with getting importing? Was one of those areas that if you spelled something wrong, it didn't come in right? Any of you nodding? <laughs> Did you get it resolved? Yeah. Okay. I'm for the email. I forgot to put like Amanda the A. For, okay. And so it wouldn't let me do anything. Uh huh. And I figured out it was because that A was missing. Okay. So, so one letter, yeah, one, one character letter. up. If you spell email with a hyphen and it doesn't have a hyphen in it, it's not going to recognize it. It has to be the same. The other thing that has to be the same when you're bringing in data is the data type. If I say that um, the student ID is a number and it's being brought in as text, it'll say these two things are not the same. So you have to match the data type. You need to match the order of your fields, otherwise it'll bring it in and put it in the wrong column. I think at least one of you had data in the wrong column and it's often easier to just delete the whole table and bring it in again than it is to try and correct all of those things. It doesn't select and copy and paste and you don't want to do that 25 times to fix something, okay? So when you're bringing in data and aren't starting from scratch, um, I think it's a lot easier to do that, all right? Okay, I think that's pretty much all you would um, be expected to get out of, of 1A. I want to show you 1B, and 1B comes from a template, and a template means that somebody else has created all the tables and all the queries and reports and forms for you, but there's no data. There's no records in your table. You go in there and it just has the field names, but nothing in it. And so your job was to create some fields to bring, or sorry, some data to bring it in, and then once you have the data in your table, you will be able to see it in all these other objects, okay? So I'm gonna close this and, and um, go open up the other one. Here's 1B. And look at all these, look at all these objects. So we've got the events table has one query, two forms, five reports, and then this is the one that you created here. Um, and the all events report is the one that you modified by putting your name up in the, in the report itself, okay? This is the default display, it's the event, events list form, but we can go verify that you um, put it into your table. This is where you um, entered your data. So there's 12 records you were supposed to bring in. Actually, I think you typed four and you brought in eight, so you didn't have to type them all by hand. But if I go to the all events report, there's 12 records there for all of the events that were put into that table. Um, if I go look at a query called current events, here's um, all the data that you guys put in. So each of these things will um, display data that are based on those 12 records that you created. So down here, we've got 12 records, one of 12, okay? Um, so you were just populating this data database with um, 12 records and then I'm going to go to the table that you were supposed to create. This was five whole records with six fields. Six fields, if I go to design view for my table, I can look at what kind of um, fields they were. Most of them were short text fields except for the seats, which is a number. That's the number of seats in that classroom so I can tell how many students I would be able to enroll in that class, okay? So that was a short table that you had to create from scratch. So when you look at the back of the book, the things that you modified were the all events report. Here's where you put your name in, um, and the report should display the title, start time, end time, and location of 12 events, and then you created this new table. So those are the two main items that you interacted with, not with this template, okay? All right, any questions about the template? If you cannot find the template on your new, on your file sheet where it goes new, I have a bunch of them here, these templates. Some of you only have two. Some of you may have somewhere between the number I've got and the number that you have. This is one of the VMware glitchy things, okay? So, and at different times, we seem to have different number of, of templates available to us. So if you cannot find the desktop event management um, uh, template. I've got a copy of it in Canvas for you to download to your computer so that you can start start from there. Okay. So if you can't find it here, 
um, or it's offline and won't let you access it, it's in Canvas for you if you need, okay? Okay, um, so let's move on to chapter two. This, I will let you know that chapter two is probably the most technical chapter that we will have all quarter. It's on queries, and a query could be redefined just as a question. Um, you're asking something of the database. And so one of the things I'd like to have us do is look at a database and brainstorm some questions that we could ask of the database, okay? And then I will get into how do you construct a query or how do you create a query to get that answer to that question, okay? So I'm gonna bring up something from chapter two and um, I'm gonna open it up on um, chapter two. Maybe I will do this, this one here. Okay. Lots and lots of queries in this one, but let's look at the table itself and go into what kind of data is here. I've got a fundraiser ID, so this is my primary key. Um, they all have FR for fundraiser and then a unique number following that. I've got a fundraiser name, I've got a date, I've got a location of the fundraiser, how much money was raised by that event, and club ID would be, um, this is tied to student clubs and which fundraisers they um, held and um, how much money they, they earned there, okay? So if I wanna do a query, generally I could do a query that just sort of summarizes some of these fields. That's what you did in, in project 1A, okay? But what if I wanna know specific information? What's the kind of question that we could ask of this? Got all this, all these records. What's something we could ask it if I wanted to know some subset of the data? Yeah, Andrew. Um, which fund raisers raise more than thousand dollars? Okay, so over a thousand, right? Greater than one thousand dollars. How much was was raised, right? Okay, what's another one? What kinds of fields do we have here? We've got text fields, we have date fields, we have currency fields. Can we ask anything about a date field? Which ones were done in May? Okay, so Andrew's saying May, we could do just May, or we could say before May or after May. Okay, so we have the ability to put a date in there. Dates actually, they are done with a pound sign. So I could say um, 5, 1, 18, uh, it's going to be between, and then it's an and, and then 5, 31, 18, and it would bring me back just the records that are for May. Okay, um, what's another field that you see here? Location, okay. I see some, I see the word Austin in some of them. Okay, so I could ask the question where, you know, which, which were held in Austin. Okay, so you can, um, and then we'll talk about how you can construct text queries, um, but we have the ability to look at um, fundraiser IDs that are greater than smaller than a particular number. We have um, before and after a value or between two values, between two dates, before and after a date. Um, lots of ways we can construct this one, okay? So a lot of it has to do with, um, with how you go about setting up your query. Your query has two ways that you can set it up. You can use the wizard where you say, I wanna go to this table and I want to bring in these fields, and then you have to set criteria for those fields. And I'll talk about what the difference um, between criteria is and how the structure of those criteria have to be um, placed in your query. So I've got this table open, and I can go to create a query, and the wizard is one of the simpler ways to do it because it helps walk you through, okay? Simple query is 
going to be um, a simple list. Wait, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's, it just allows you to ask for something and to bring it back. There are other kinds of queries, but in this class, we'll just say, go find the information that I tell you to look for. So we've got Andrew's thing of greater than 1,000. So we would want to know certainly how much, which donation, right? We would could include the date or not. We should probably want to have fundraiser name. Anything else besides that that we would need? The name of the fundraiser and which one, how much money? Not the location, probably. Maybe location. Maybe which club gets to have that money, OK? So let's do the fundraiser name. And if you don't choose, if you do them individually like this, you can choose the order that they appear in. You can jump around. If you use the double arrow, it puts them all over. Um, and then this, this will remove things from your selected field. So I'm going to do the donation amount, and then the um, location, and then the club ID. Okay. So we have four fields out of the six that we're going to include in our query. And then we say next, and we'll finish. And now we have our four fields, OK? When you do a query wizard, it does not allow you to place criteria in the query. You just get the structure of the table, OK, or the query. And so we have to go into Design View to get into where we place criteria. Design View for all of them are on the Home tab. And your book will talk you through this. But what we're looking at now is the same four fields in the same, four, uh, same order. This is the field, the name of the field. This is which table it comes from. And because these are long named tables with people's names in them, all of them are going to say last name, first name. But you can um, extend and make them bigger. In fact, you can select three of them and make them bigger um, to see what the name of the actual table is. So fundraisers, fundraisers, all from the same table, right? Sorting, you have the option to sort in one of two ways, ascending or descending. This is going to be different. We did a little bit of this in Excel, sorting our tables, right? Um, ascending is A to Z, or for numbers, it's one to bigger numbers. For dates, it's um, most recent to oldest. And so it's going to be different for different kinds of data. Um, it also works left to right. So if I put a sort here and here, it's going to work left to right. And if I want to prioritize a sort, I'd have to move fields around in, um, in my design view in order to get that to happen, OK? So I'm going to leave the last name as a, uh, a fundraiser name as a sort. I'm going to do that ascending. So it's going to put them alphabetically by the fundraiser name. And then we talked about making donations only that are greater than 1,000, right? That's a criteria. So the criteria row is right here. So underneath the donation field, I can't just put it anywhere. It's got to go under the field for the data type that I'm looking at. Because it's money, it has to be under the donation field. And I use my greater than or less than symbol. Whoops. Uh oh, what did I just do? Uh, I think I, I must have something wrong with my uh, num lock here. Um, OK, greater than and then 1,000. There we go. You don't need dollar signs. It will figure that out. Dollar signs will get in the way. So it's greater than 1,000. You don't need commas. Um, and that's all we need to do for this particular question. We've got um, fundraiser name and the donations that are greater than 1,000. When I am ready, I hit the run with an exclamation point. And if you look at these donation values, they're all over $1,000, right? Anybody remember how many records we had a minute ago? Me either. Um, but we only have six now. Can you see that? It's possible to do a query on a query. So I could go further and say, you know, tell me the, the fundraisers for Club 106, and it would um, bring it down. Um, what else do I see? None of those. Oh, OK. Here's, here's another possibility. I've got a couple of fundraisers that have the word hall in it, OK? So what if I want them to be fundraisers that are held in a hall? I can go back to my design view. And under the location, I can hit the word hall. And I'm going to do this incorrectly on purpose 
Because if I just type Paul here, what do you think it's going to go look for? Hall. Just Hall, right? It's going to look for the value Hall, just all by itself. So when I go to run this, it says zero. If you get zero on your queries and your assignments, something's wrong with your criteria. You typed the wrong word, okay? It's really easy to do. So this was not, there's no record in here that has just the word Hall in it. So we need to modify that query or that criteria so that it does fit. Notice it puts quotes around it. I didn't type the quotes in, it does that for me. But I can come in here and put an asterisk before the word hall, and that's a, a wild card. So anything that comes before the word hall is gonna show up when I hit my asterisk here. Okay? Now I'm gonna run this, and Georgetown Hall, Fast Trap Town Hall shows up, because they both have hall before their word. Okay? I mean. They have words before the word hall. They come before that. If I had, and I'll, I'll do one later on, um, things that were in different places. Maybe um, one is at the beginning of the word, and then and the, uh, one's in the center, one's in the in the end. I can set up my my asterisk or my wild card different ways to bring back all of that data. Okay. So this was a query on a query. We're down to two, and then we can. Um, remove criteria or go back and get, um, get other things. Um, we can take one out and we'll go back to our six. So we would have to remove this query, these criteria I mean, and then we could run that again and we'd be back to our six, okay? Um, but I haven't messed with my table. My table still has all the original um, records there. So the query is outside the table. I'm not modifying the table. It's just basing the query on this table, okay? Let's do a quick one on dates. So I want to do a query on the dates between um, May 1st and May 30th, okay? I'm going to go to, this, to, um, uh, to create a query. <laughs> and I'm going to do this one in design view. Instead of doing the wizard where I have to choose the table and I have to choose these other things, I'm going to go to this where I get directly to that um, design view that I had before. But I do need to tell it which data I'm using. So we were in the, the fundraisers table, so I'm going to double click on that to get my table to pop up. If I want to be done with that, I can close this and make my boxes a little bigger. Here you can bring data down in a variety of ways. If I want just certain things, I want my fundraiser name to be first, I can double click on it and it will pop down in that first slot. Um, if I click on another one, it's going to put it in the first slot and move the fundraiser over. So if I want my fundraiser to be first and I want to bring that other ones, I can drag them. So I had um, donation. And then I had fundraiser name, oops, I already got that, um, location, and then also the date, right? So here we have um, date fields. I have to go down to my criteria, and this one, because I'm going between two values, I can type the word between, and um, you're not leaving. <laughs> um, between uh, five, one eighteen, and then I write word and five thirty one eighteen. Eighteen. All right, let's run that and see what we get. Okay, here's three values that are in May, all of them, right? We didn't sort it by anything in particular, so it's just showing up um, in whatever order they were in, and then we could. Um, filter this further by values less than 500. Um, so you can do a query on a query once 